Jack, can you just start by telling us a little bit about some of the research you guys are doing with homemade masks? Sure. Uh, some weeks ago, when it became clear that the hospital might encounter severe shortages of PPE, of, of masks, we set out to find out if a cloth mask would be a reasonable alternative to traditional surgical masks. We were not trying to replace, by the way, the high-end N95 respirators, but traditional surgical masks, which are also in short supply. So there's a large army of volunteers eager to make uh, masks, and they started making them. And we actually got several hundred donated to us. And it was clear from the beginning that they followed widely different designs, different types of materials, whether they tied on or went uh, around your ears, um, different types of whether there was inserts or not and so forth. And our hospital president, who happens to be an infectious disease specialist, said, do we know if these are any good? Uh, and so we set out to try to determine how efficient these masks were at filtering out particles. And so I contacted a laboratory here at Wake Forest known as the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine that has airborne particle counting apparatus. And so essentially what we did is we took a supply of medical grade air, counted the very small microscopic particles that were in that air, blew it through the mask at about the rate that one breathes, and then measured the particles on the other side of the mask. And the percentage of particles that were trapped was the efficiency of that mask. So an N95 mask, the 95 means it filters 95%, and it did in our hands um, down to the smallest particles, which were 0.3 microns or three ten thousandths of a millimeter, about the size of a large virus. Uh, it filtered about 97%. A surgical mask, 62 to 65 percent. And the cloth masks were all over the map. We had some that outperformed surgical masks, 75, 79 percent filtration. But we had some that filtered only 20 percent, and one of the designs filtered 1 percent. And so we concluded that what you make your mask out of makes a big difference of how much protection it offers. And that was the, the basis of our project. And so what did you find was the best type of fabric for the masks that were the most effective? So this is a little difficult. You have to understand this would not be my normal field of expertise. Uh, my wife jokes with me that she's happy that I'm wearing a shirt from this century. Um, what I've learned is you want a high thread count, heavy cotton fabric. It's sometimes referred to as quilters cotton, as opposed to the lower grade, more open weave printed cotton fabrics that you might find at a large discount fabric store. Um, you also need two layers of fabric. Uh, the, the sandwich between them makes it harder for particles to find their way through. Um, it also turned out that a simple cotton outer with a flannel inner layer also worked very well. Um, but single um, layer masks did not work well. Masks made exclusively from the more open weave, lower end cotton also did not work well. And to our surprise, adding a little insert where you could put additional materials between the layers didn't seem to help very much. Um, sometimes they also made it much harder to breathe through. And that's something else to keep in mind when designing a mask, you have to be able to breathe through. Uh, so we, uh, we found, and I have some here with me, I'm not sure it will help you to see them, but. Um, I can send you some pictures, uh, but um, apparently a poor, sort of a poor man or woman's way to tell the difference is to hold the fabric up to a bright light source. And if you can easily see the light passing between the fibers, it's not a very high end fabric. And if you cannot, that's more indicative of this heavyweight high thread count fabric that you should be using. So do you find that it mattered at all how it was made? You said that some people had some that I think has tied behind them or some that went around the rear ears. Did that matter at all or is it really just all coming down to the fabric? It's a great question. We have not tested fit with these masks. However, the ear loop style masks are generally not used in sterile procedure areas like an operating room or a procedure area because they don't as readily conform to the shape of the face. So we prefer a tie-on design if it's gonna be used in a medical setting. Now for more casual use by the general public or in 
areas where you won't be interacting with a patient in a higher um, risk, sterile kind of procedure, it may be that an ear loop mask is fine. But the other problem with an ear loop mask is if you take it on and off, you're more likely to contaminate your hands. Whereas with a tied mask, you can untie it carefully and remove it without contaminating your hands. And so we prefer that design both for better fit and maybe less chance of contamination. Also, as it turns out, there's a run on elastic. You can't buy elastic to save yourself right now. <laughs> Very true. We just got an email from somebody who was desperately trying to find elastic for masks that they were making. Were you surprised by the results and how effective some of them were? Obviously, they're not as good as the N95s, but when you compared them to surgical masks, were you surprised by some of those results? I was delighted and surprised uh, that a simple cotton mask could perform that well because I think previously some studies that were made maybe from like t-shirt type material had showed that they were quite inferior. So I was a little pessimistic that we were gonna find one that worked well, but I was delighted that there is something that can make a, a, a very effective mask and sort of our reason for doing this and for getting the word out is so that if people do choose to make masks for their own use or to donate to healthcare facilities, at least they try to concentrate on the most effective designs. Right. Now, is this thing that you guys are using at all? I know we probably don't want them for, you know, these cases where you would typically use the N95s, but is this something that you foresee needing to use them in the surgical settings or is this more for people who are looking to wear them themselves at home? I would say both, but primarily the latter right now. We have these in place as a backup plan for the hospital, but we are not deploying them presently. There are lots of federal regulations and general provider safety concerns that we would want to be really kind of have our backs against the wall to stop using traditional PPE. But we're watching the supplies every day and everybody knows that they're in short supply everywhere. And we count our supply every morning versus how much we're using. And we don't want to be caught flat footed. So should the supply ever get really critical, we want it to be ready. And that's what we're doing. But we have not yet deployed them for clinical use in our hospital. And we're hearing that there may be some new recommendations coming out about trying to use masks for just the general public when before we were being told, don't use it unless you're sick. Um, is that thing that you guys are, you know, what, um, personally, are you going to be using a mask? Do you think people should be using a mask? What do you think? I brought one home for my wife and my son. Uh, I, I think if I do have to venture out, it's something that I will certainly consider. But I think it's important for the public to remember that no mask is as good as social distancing and good hand hygiene and other simple safety precautions. Um, if you must venture out, it seems like the public health recommendation may be to go ahead and wear a mask, but we should be clear, you're trying to achieve a different purpose there. The purpose of a mask for a healthcare worker is to protect the wearer. The purpose of a mask for the public is really a public health initiative to try to prevent asymptomatic but infected people from hurting others, not as much to protect the wearer. But in my view, if you're gonna wear a mask, you might as well wear one that offers some protection to you as well. Hence our recommendation to try to concentrate on these higher quality cottons. Absolutely. Anything else that I didn't think to ask you that you wanted to mention about the research you guys are doing? Well, we need to test how well they hold up to repeated washing. And that's one of the next things that we're gonna be working on. So we'll be washing some of our best designs multiple times and retesting them. Um, and there are a few other designs that involve novel materials that we also want to test. Um, you may have heard about people using vacuum cleaner bags or the filters that make up air conditioner filters because those are designed to filter out particles as well. So we'll be testing a few additional designs and I'm excited to see all of the volunteerism and the, and, and the willingness to pitch in as well as all the ingenuity that people are coming up with. It's, um, it's been heartwarming to see how hard people are trying to help. And I don't want to discourage that in any way. And so we'll keep trying out different designs and testing longevity and, and so forth over the coming weeks. Absolutely. It's been so interesting to see some of the results you guys have gotten so far. We look forward to seeing what else you guys are able to learn. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate your interest.